uh, welcome to Montreal. And I actually have a couple of questions for you. The first one is, how do you how do you view the experience you had in free agency last year versus the one that you just experienced over the last 24 hours? Uh, obviously, last year was a little different. Um, things played out a lot longer. Um, you know, we waited, you know, till pretty much training camp started to to make a decision. And, you know, like this year, we we wanted to get something done sooner rather than, rather than later. Uh, I think it just makes it easier on everybody, especially myself, moving to, to if we were going to go to a new team, um, you know, finding housing and and all that, and, you know, the travel and, and whatnot. So um, that was kind of our, our objective this year was to try and get something done uh, sooner than later. Mike, this might be hard for you to answer, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Goal scoring has always been at a premium in the NHL. It's something that people pay for. Um, and yet there was that issue last season and having to wait for so long. And there's this stigma kind of in the marketplace that, hey, Mike Hoffman plays great on the power play, but at five on five, sometimes he's more defensively liable. How do you view that perception and how would you like to change it in Montreal? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I can obviously play play a two hundred foot game and and contribute five on five. Um, you know, I think everyone can get better at uh, you know certain aspects of the game. No one's perfect, so uh, you know, want to make sure you, you know, keep your keep your assets obviously as, as high as you can. But um, you know, like I said, there's always things that you can work on, and, and you want to try and get better as a, as a player and uh, help your team. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Next question, Martin McGuire, 98.5. Martin, you're up. Thanks. Uh, congrats, uh, Mike, for the contract. Uh, just want to know if you had other option and why you pick Montreal. Why do you think that Montreal was, was the right place for you? Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, there were uh, other options. Uh, but there's nothing like playing hockey in Canada, uh, let alone Montreal, um, being a, you know, original six team and the, the fans and, and atmosphere and city, it just has everything that you want as a hockey player to, to go to a city like that. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to, to the opportunity of playing, playing the Bell Center in front of, in front of all the fans. Um, and then obviously the, the hockey part of it is I think they got a, a great hockey team, uh, you know, some great young talent that's coming up and I think they're going to be good for, for a long time. So it was a pretty easy decision for me. Uh, Martin, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, yeah, just uh, one more if it's possible. Uh, one of your assets is, is your power play, power play game, uh, Mike. Uh, Montreal, obviously, uh, will lost Shea Weber at least for the, the rest of, of the next season. Uh, would you say that uh, it's a right timing to, to reach Montreal and having this type, that type of assets uh, be a good shooter on the power play? Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, whether who, who's there and who, who's not there. Uh, but yeah, that is something that, that I contribute and, and take pride in. Um, you know, being able to shoot the puck and, and being a threat, threat on the power play to, to help your team win games is, is the most important thing. So, um, you know, hopefully I can come in there and, and keep it going. Thank you, Martin. Next question, Arpen Basu, The Athletic. Uh, good afternoon, Mike. Uh, congrats and welcome to Montreal. Um, <clears throat> to what extent was, uh, was your role on whichever team you decided to sign with a factor in your decision and, and, and what did Montreal tell you about what your role might be? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, wherever I went, my role would obviously be very similar. Um, I don't think a team's bringing me in to, you know, play, play on the fourth line or, or do things like that. Obviously I'm more of a, an offensive player. And um, so, you know, coming to Montreal, I, it was, you know, a lot of it had to do with with the area, the city, playing Canada, um, them having a good team, and more so of you know, kind of the, the role that we've been talking about. And it was it was reported last night that St. Louis came came hard after you to, to keep you. Um, 
just wondering how that decision went, how, how difficult that decision was and, and how that made you feel that they wanted to keep you around, um, um, you know, in this, in this situation. Yeah. I mean, uh, you come to decisions like that, this is, you know, the, the career that, that we play in and sometimes, you know, changes happen and, and moves happen. But, uh, I, I really enjoyed my, my time in St. Louis, got along with, with the guys. Great. And, um, you know, it's just a little unfortunate that we weren't able to, you know, really enjoy and take part in, you know, having a, a full building and playing in front of, in front of all their, all their fans. Um, but, you know, now looking ahead, I'm, I'm super excited to, to join a team like Montreal and really looking forward to get things going. Okay. Thank you. Stu Cowan. Just wondering how much you might've watched the Canadians play last season. Uh, what impressed you most about them and maybe just your thoughts of possibly playing on a line with one of the young centers, either Suzuki or Kakiyemi. Yeah. I watched a, a lot of their games. Um, I've seen more so in the playoffs, but uh you know, they have a very, you know, offensive, talented, talented group and they play well on the back end too. So, I mean, I think they have the, the full package, obviously one of the best goaltenders in the world. Um, so, you know, like I said, there's uh, a lot of, a lot of positivity and uh, bright future for, for the organization. And the, you know, like you said, the two centermen's they're uh, extremely skilled and obviously young and, um, you know, still making, making their way in the league, but uh, it seems like they're doing a, a pretty good job of it. Obviously getting to the finals is, uh, you know, nothing, not the easiest thing to do. I, I know you've played before for Luke Richardson as a coach. I'm just wondering him being here, did that have any impact or have you talked, spoken with him since uh, either before you signed or after you signed? Yeah, I've spoke to Luke. We had a, a great relationship when we worked together in, in Ottawa's organization. Um, I think obviously it helps and it's a, it's a bonus that, you, you know, someone within, within the coaching staff. So, um, you know, definitely it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's a bonus to, to have that. Thanks. Here's to next question. Guillaume Lefrançois, La Presse. Guillaume, you're up. Hi, Mike. Uh, congratulations on the contract. Uh, it was reported over the last few years that there was interest from Montreal in you. I just wanted to know if you could confirm whether or not you've, you've had talks in the last few years and, and what made the difference this time around that, that led you to, to choose Montreal. Um, yeah, I think there was uh, a little talk between them and, and my agent last summer, um, but uh, they weren't able to obviously come to, to an agreement on something, but, uh, you know, this time around, obviously different. And, um, you know, I'm su super excited that uh, we were able to get something done. It was one of the teams that I uh, definitely had on my radar and, um, you know, really looking forward to, to joining a, a franchise like this. All right. Um, also, I just wanted to ask you how you felt, uh, how you feel personally uh, that you have grown uh, throughout your different experiences from, you know, from it seemed a bit of a chaotic time, maybe in the juniors, uh, changing, you know, playing for three different teams in the queue to, to, to the way things ended in, in, in Ottawa for you. I, I just wanted to know how, how much you, you believe you've, you've grown uh, through those experiences. Yeah, obviously, uh, any experience that you have and I mean, you want to take the, the positivity from it. It's, uh, you know, brought me here today. And that's, you know, kind of the man I am today. I've, uh, you know, we played on, played on a couple of teams, junior and obviously the NHL now, but you want to take those experiences and um, obviously you can learn from them. You get to play with some, some tremendous players, uh, you know, some of the best in the world and, you know, try and, you know, make yourself better every day and see what they do and, um, you know, try and take after some of, you know, those footsteps that they show you. Mike Zeisberger. Hey, uh, congratulations on the deal. I just wanted to, uh, to ask you about, uh, you know, as, as somebody that's seen you play since you were eight or nine years old in Kitchener, um, you know, I know the grind that it's been for you to, reach this point uh can you talk a little bit about the journey the experiences of you having to show the hockey world um what your potential was and and how much did playing in in the queue help your development and 
give you an understanding of just how passionate the fan base is in the province of Quebec. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you want to do anything and be successful in anything you do in life, it's uh, it takes a lot of hard work and, and dedication and, and nothing comes easy. Um, you know, so my mindset ever since I was young and working my way through is I always believed in myself and, and uh, you know, thought I could eventually make the NHL. And like you said before, you got to have a positive mindset. Um, hold on, I just got a call coming in. Sorry. Um, yeah, and like obviously all, all the experiences that you have, you try and learn from them and, and move on forward. And obviously playing in the, the Quebec League, you get to see how passionate, uh, you know, the Montreal fans are. And um, I really enjoyed my time there. And, you know, obviously that was pretty cool to just see the excitement and, you know, what happens during the games, after games. Um, so it's, uh, you know, like I said, I'm super excited to join the organization like this and can't wait to get things started how tough was it when you're when you're a kid that you know uh relatively young you're not you, you know you're not getting the fanfare you're not getting um maybe the appreciation from scouts how important was it you touched on this to believe that i can make it even when a lot of people don't you know don't think that maybe i can yeah that's probably the biggest thing you got to be strong mentally um and, you know it's never easy if you you want to make it to the highest stage in the world obviously the nhl is the you know, the best league out there and uh if you know making it here if uh you know i didn't have the dedication or or work ethic or strong strong mentally you know i probably wouldn't be here today thanks mike we'll take uh, two more for uh for mike we'll go with marc-antoine godin and jean-francois tremblay marc-antoine europe Hello, Mike. Uh, welcome to Montreal. Um, well, I've got two questions. First off, you were a, a plus player last season in St. Louis, and you were asked about growth earlier. Uh, what part of your game would you say that you've been able to improve the most in, in, in the last few years? Um, I think uh, being more consistent. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the biggest I'm going to say struggles, but one of the hardest things to do in, in the NHL is be a, you know, consistent uh, producer. Um, you know, there's, we play obviously 82 games, not 82 last year, but you're playing a lot of hockey. And um, I think to, over the, the course of my career, uh, I've got to learn my body a lot better and, and know what you need to do preparation wise to give yourself the best opportunities out there and have yourself feeling the best um you know and obviously it's still a still a growing game so um that's something that you know i take pride in and um trying to go out there and you know give myself like i said the best opportunity for myself and if i'm doing that then i'm helping my team as well yeah uh and my other question is regarding your your production your goal scoring ability i mean being able to score goals is not something that all the players in the nhl are able to do at the same rate as you do uh, since when you look at what you've been able to produce since you entered the league, are you a little bit surprised? You know, you've had experience on the UFA market now for two years in a row. Are you a little bit surprised that the, the response you got throughout the league compared to the, that, that production that you were you're able to put forth? Yeah. I mean, uh, it kind of is what it is. Uh, you, you go out there and, and play your best and, you know, put your best foot forward. And at the end of the day, it, uh, all that other stuff, you don't, you can't really control. You don't, uh, you don't get to decide what GMs want or, you know, some certain teams want you go out there and, um, you know, like I said, yeah, I, obviously scoring goals is great. It's, uh, you know, probably the funnest thing playing hockey. And that's uh, something that I, I take pride in. Thank you. Last question, Jean-François Tremblay. Yeah, hello, Mike. Uh, welcome to Montreal. Um, during the, the, the Habs playoff run, um, I know there were a few of the young centers were mentioned, but uh, other, all over the team, are, are there certain guys you feel you can have a really good chemistry with? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say anybody... Uh... In particular, I think uh, 
everyone has, you know, their, their abilities and, and their own talents and, and good in a certain way. And um, I'm sure, you know, once training camp comes around, you'll be able to um, figure out, you know, players' tendencies a little bit more. And, you know, obviously it takes a little bit of time to, to build some chemistry, but, um, you know, I think there's obviously a lot of, a lot of good options out there. Um, the Canadians being a Stanley Cup finalists, um, do you think that that, that affects how our team play, uh, the team that reaches that level of success, and how that affects uh, how difficult it would be to re, uh, achieve again that same level of success? Yeah, if he, I mean, obviously, I think it's, uh, it's tremendous that they were um, able to go that far. You get a, a taste of the playoffs and, and see what it's like. Obviously, no one likes losing. Um, You know, but I think that'll just make make everyone hungrier. You know, uh, you know, you know, get to know what it takes to to win the playoffs and um, make it to to that level. Obviously, it's a, it's not an easy task to do. Um, so I think uh, you know the experience part plays a big big role.